Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about everything you ever wanted to know about the data grids in Oracle SQL Developer. I'm Jeff Smith, the product manager, and let's get into it. So when I say data grids, I'm talking about the presentation of query results. When you run a query uh, using this button, which is mapped to Control Enter or F9, or if you're going to browse uh, the contents of a table here on the data tab this is a grid although you'll see these grids all over the place in the tool and so a lot of what I'm showing you today applies for wherever these grids are presented but for the examples I'll be showing you the data grid in a SQL worksheet so the first thing I want to take a look at is controlling how these grids look so we have uh, black text on a white background and we have the default font um, on Windows at least. So let's go into the preferences and you'll see on the database category at the very bottom there's a worksheet page and we're going to make two changes, or actually going to make one change here. We are going to enable this and then we're also going to go to the code editor page to fonts and we're going to choose a font that we like. I'm going to say Droid Sans Mono and since we're doing a video I want you guys to be able to see uh, the data okay. I'm going to go up on a um, larger font. By the way you can make this text here anything that you want so if you're having problems getting uh, certain Unicode characters to display maybe your favorite emoji or maybe a, a character from uh, Chinese character set or Arabic you simply type them in here and you'll see how they print below right out of the box so that's a good troubleshooting technique. Okay so as soon as I did that I see that the, um, the way that the grid looks is much different and I prefer the uh, alternating um, background color scheme just because it seems a little bit easier on the eyes and what you'll want to do for fonts is going to be very subjective so just pick something that works for you okay so we can see here that not all of the data on this column is showing now I can mouse over and see what's in there or I can also right click on this and say auto fit um, all columns we default to this thing called best fit so I could say auto fit on data so I never have to um, drill into the cell to see everything that's there but you'll notice that I now have to do a lot of scrolling to see everything so we can right click on just one column and say just for this column let's make that best fit or let's make that maybe just on the header so it's going to be as wide as the the header name or I could also do that for all of the columns the next thing we want to talk about in the grids um, let's talk about the single record viewer so instead of having this multiple rows left to right kind of spreadsheet style we can have more of an index card style where we have one record at a time so if you right click on the grid and ask for the single record view it gives you just that and you can advance these records one at a time and you can also jump to the last record in the result set if you want Doing this will force a full fetch. So if you're on a you know million row result set, I wouldn't recommend clicking this button if you haven't already fetched all of the records. So that's the single record view. Let's look at some more complex data types. So anytime you see these brackets, make this a little wider. Anytime you see this bracketed data, that indicates this is a complex data type. And if you want to see what's behind that, just double click. And here's the actual data for that cell. But if we look at a slightly different data type, maybe something a little bit more common, blobs. So 
let's set this to fit screen. Yep. So we have this in parentheses. If I double click and open the pencil editor, I get a lot of things I, I can do here. So I know this is an image, so I can just ask the tool to automatically show me that image. I can also download the blob as a file. And if there were text in this blob, I could just immediately see um, the text inside that. So as you run queries in a worksheet, the um, data grids automatically close. However, you can get around that. So as you run a query, if you want the grid to persist, just take this push pin and press it down. So this is what it looks like unpinned. That's the default behavior. You press that down, this grid will stay here until I physically close it. So if I unpin this and now ran this query, that result set went away. If I want to run another query and have this result set stick, I can just come right back up here and run this query. And I still have that one and I now have this additional one. Let's say you have no idea what data um, these grids are meant to um, contain. You can answer this question in a couple different ways. You can mouse over the top and you can see the query text that way. You can also click the SQL button here and that gives you the ability to copy that off the clipboard and, and get it back into your worksheet if you'd like. Let's talk about manipulating these grids. So you can do very simple things like dragging and dropping the columns around. I can also apply filters. So this is a client side filter and by that I mean the data is already fetched to the client, in this case Windows. Um, these are the values that the client knows of and if I select one of these it's only going to show records that have already been fetched down of that value. So I've got a filter set here now. I know that the filter set because the little funnel icon is there. If I click on this and then double click this, that will remove that filter. So we had two for December 15th. So if we do that again, come down here and see what that value was 15 December. Yep. So there are those two records. Now if I export this data, uh, with this column order and with this filter in place, I will get just those two records in the order of the columns shown. And you can have multiple filters if you'd like. I'm just going to delete this filter. Let's talk about sorting. So um, these are not client side sorts. If I double click on um, the column, it automatically does a sort. In this case, it's doing an ascending alphabetical sort and I can tell that because there's an arrow pointing up and it's got the AZ and they're telling me there it's alpha sort. I have a date here if I double click this I know it's a time based or date based ascending sort because again I've got that icon there telling me that. If I double click again it goes in the opposite direction and if I double click again it takes the sort off. Now you might want to be able to do more than one sort at a time. So maybe I want to sort both this text and this time period. Right click on the header, say sort, and so we're going to sort this descending and I want to sort this ascending and I don't have nulls here, but if I did, I could uh, specify if nulls should come first or last, and I'll click OK. That reruns the query, and now I've got a 1 and a 2 showing in what order the sort was applied. Right click again, sort. And we can also see a list of sorts that were applied to this result set, so I can um, bring those back.
Let's do some copy and paste tricks for these grids. I might want to be able to copy out some of this data. Obviously, I can do Control C and Control V and, and get that data out. But I might want the column headers too. So I can also do Control Shift C and I get um, the column header and the, um, the data as well. Let's try that again. So there are the three columns and their headers. Maybe I want just the headers. So that's a little bit different. So if I want to copy just these two column headers, I select cells um, for the columns. Then I right click on the column header itself and I say copy selected column headers. That's on the clipboard and then I can paste just those out. And you'll notice they're comma separated. So I could add that to a select if I wanted. I might also want to copy um, values out of this. So let's do select room num first name, last name, third name. It's not higher date. It's higher date. Okay. So I can do this. And do that. So there's lots of cool tricks with the grid. One of the most frequently asked questions I see out there on the interwebs is around this guy right here. I know this is a date. I know there are times associated with it. Why isn't SQL Developer showing me the times? Well, you need to go into the preferences on the database page, NLS, and you're going to set the date format to include the time. So HH24. S, enter, and we're going to run this query again. And there's the full date value. Same principle applies to um, timestamps. So I do select sys date sys timestamp dual. Look at the preferences. The date is uh, following this rule, and the timestamp is following that rule. Or if it has a time zone attached, it would follow that one. Let's do one last data grid feature, and that's not in the worksheet. We're going to go look at a table. So again, everything I've shown you previously also applies here, or even also applies here on the columns page. I could rearrange these and do sorts on these and um, right click export and get a spreadsheet out of these values um, in that exact um, order that's being shown. But what I want to do instead is I want to come to the data grid and I want to insert some rows. So let's actually copy out a bunch of rows first. So I just did control C and I actually have a table called employees copy two. It's empty. So I'm gonna hit the plus button. Well, a lot of folks don't realize you can hit this plus button as many times as you want. I'm going to paste that in, and then we'll just remove the records we don't need. Oops. There we go, and then we'll just commit. Yep. So that's a neat trick for um, multiple uh, pasting to do inserts. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about SQL Developer, you can subscribe to my channel or you can go to my blog at thatjeffsmith.com. Thanks so much and enjoy the rest of your day.